Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. We begin our celebration. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who through your only begotten Son have made us a new creation for yourself, Grant, we pray, that by your grace we may be found in the likeness of him in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we have this confidence in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in regard to whatever we ask, we know that what we have asked him for is ours. If anyone sees his brother sinning, if the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God and he will give him life. This is only for those whose sin is not deadly. There is such a thing as deadly sin, about which I do not say that you should pray. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is not deadly. We know that anyone begotten by God does not sin, but the one begotten by God he protects, and the evil one cannot touch him. We know that we belong to God, and the whole world is under the power of the evil one. We also know that the Son of God has come and has given us discernment to know the one who is true. And we are in the one who is true, and his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Children, be on your guard against idols. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise and assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. Please stand.
The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went into the region of Judea, where he spent some time with them baptizing. John was also baptizing in Ainon near Salim, because there was an abundance of water there, and people came to be, to be baptized for John had not yet been imprisoned. Now a dispute arose between the disciples of John and a Jew about ceremonial washings. So they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, here he is baptizing, and everyone is coming to him. John answered and said, no one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said that I am not the Christ, but that I was sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom, the best man who stands and listens for him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. So, so, this joy of mine has been made complete. He must increase. I must decrease. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po muli sa ating lahat. Kung ilalagay po siguro natin ang ating mga sarili sa mga tao sa panahon ng ni Juan Bautista, malamang malaki ang posibilidad na hindi natin siya magugustuhan. Sabi nga ng isang article, John was the first person who experienced the cancel culture. Alam niyo yung cancel culture na meron daw tayo ngayon, ano? Yung ang dali-dali lang mag-disapprove, mag, mag mag-dislike, o itapon mo yung tao. It's just a matter of clicking the button and that's already it. Ayaw ko na sa'yo. It's a matter of just thumbs down. Ayaw ko na sa'yo. That's a cancel, cancel culture. Ang dali-dali. Meron ka lang marinig na hindi maganda sa tao, meron ka nang husga sa kanya. Para bagang alam na alam mo na kung sino yung taong yun. Di ba? Meron ka na agad comment. Ang dali-dali. Si Juan Bautista, ganun din yung naranasan sa kanyang panahon. Bakit? Eh, hindi mo masisisi ang mga tao na sapagkat kasi napakakaiba naman kasi talaga ni Juan Bautista. Para bagang sa mata ng mga tao sa kanyang panahon, wala sa lugar ang taong ito. Wala sa lugar. Remember, John was considered to be in the line of the priests, the religious leaders of that time. At ang mga religious leaders sa panahon ni Juan Bautista, palaging nasa templo. Doon nagsiserve, gumagawa ng offering, nagbabahagi ng mabuting balita, nagsisilbihan ng mga tao. Si Juan Bautista, ibang-iba. Wala sa templo, nasa nandun sa disyerto. Baho-baho na nga siguro niya eh. Ang pangit-pangit ng itsura. At anong kinakain? Insekto. Remember, he was called to be the person who was eating locust and honey in the desert. Siguro sa panahon natin ngayon, sabi siguro natin na babaliw na yata yung taong yun na. Bakit? Eh kasi pwede naman sana siyang lumugar doon sa templo. Siguro maraming pagkakataon yung kanyang mga kamag-anak ng mga pari din. Sinasabihan siya, Iwan, kalma lang. 
dahan-dahan lang. Sumunod ka lang sa amin at magiging okay ang buhay mo. Huwag pa dalos-dalos. Huwag masyadong maingay. Sumabay ka lang sa agos. Siguro yun yung sinasabi sa kanya. Ano? Pero hindi eh. Ibang karakter ito si Juan Bautista eh. In fact, because of this kind of character, napugutan nga siya ng ulo. Hindi siya sumabay sa agos eh. Di ba? Nakiapid yung hari sa asawa ng kanyang kapatid. Sino ang nagsalita? Nagsalita ba yung leaders of that time? were also considered to, to, to be the moral experts. Tahimik sila. Bakit? Eh, iniisip nila, wala sila sa lugar para magsabi doon. But John was very courageous to say, that is wrong. Hindi yan tama. Ready? Pugot ang ulo ni Juan Bautista. Kaya nga siguro kung nandito si Juan Bautista, sabihin siguro talaga natin lagi sa kanya, wala ka sa lugar. Wala ka sa lugar. Hindi ka namin gusto. Masakit yung sinasabi mo. Siguro nga, sa standards ng mundo na ito, sa mata ng mundo na ito, wala sa lugar si Juan Bautista. Pero, sa mata ng Diyos at para kay Juan Bautista, lagi siyang nasa lugar o lumulugar sa presensya ng Diyos. Kahit hindi pa ito katanggap-tanggap, kahit hindi pa ito popular sa mga tao sa paligid niya, lumulugar siya para sa Diyos. Kung tutusin, mahirap nga naman pag, kapag wala ka sa lugar. Ano? Kapag wala ka sa lugar, magulo. Magulo. Halimbawa na lamang, nagtatawanan, nagbibiruan, pero habang nagmimisa, eh, hindi maganda no, magulo. Wala sa lugar. Wala sa lugar. Halimbawa na lamang, ikaw ay nakakwarantin. Pero lumabas ka sa quarantine. Nakiparty ka. Kung ano-anong ginagawa mo. Wala sa lugar. Magulong buhay mo, magkaganon. Wala sa lugar. Isa pang halimbawa, kung ikaw ay anak, pero kung pagalitan mo yung magulang mo, ay parang ikaw ang magulang. Kesyo, nakapag-aral ka na, may kinikita ka na, para bagang mas magaling ka pa sa magulang mo. Kaya pag pinagalitan mo, wagas. Nasa lugar, wala. Di maganda tingnan, ano? Siyempre, magulang mo yun. Ang laging ibinibigay, respeto, pagmamahal. Yun yung lugar bilang anak. Hindi ba? Pero pag wala sa lugar, magulo. Si Juan Bautista, laging inilulugar ang kanyang sarili sa presensya ng Diyos, sa kagustuhan ng Diyos. Kahit hindi pa ito popular, gusto ng mundo na kinatatayuan niya. Ano ang reward? Look at the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other person born of a woman greater than he. Papuri ang maririnig mo sa bibig ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo, ng ating Panginoong Diyos patungkol kay Juan Bautista. Bakit? Yun nga. 
Lagi niyang nilalagay ang kanyang sarili sa lugar, sa presensya ng Diyos. At sa tingin ko, yun ang hamon sa ating lahat. Yun ang hamon sa ating lahat. Na palaging ilagay sa lugar ang ating mga sarili sa presensya at sa kagustuhan ng Diyos. Paano natin malalaman na tayo nasa lugar sa presensya at kagustuhan ng Diyos? Titignan natin si Juan Bautista. May dalawang bagay siguro ako nakikita dito na parang elements ng kanyang buhay na laging inilalagay niya sa presensya ng Diyos. Ano yun? Una, ang buhay ni Juan Bautista laging nasa katotohanan. Buhay katotohanan. Nakayakap lagi si Juan Bautista sa katotohanan. Kaya nga, ano, yung kanyang mga salita sometimes are not sweet words. Diretso niyang sinabi sa hari, mali ang ginagawa mo, nakikiapid ka. Diretso. Walang paligoy-ligoy. I bet because that is the truth. Juan Bautista, meron nagbabaptize doon, pangalan, Heso Kristo. Anong gagawin natin sa kanya? Papaalisin ba natin? His words. He must increase, I must decrease. Siguro masakit sa kanyang mga disipulo yun, ano? Kala ko ba ikaw na? Kala ko ba ikaw na yung susundan namin? Pero hindi walang alinlangan. Siguro ako yun, mag-alinlangan. Baka pag sinabi kong ganun, iwanan siguro ako ng mga disipulo ko. Siya wala, no? He must increase, I must decrease. I am not the Christ. Klaro. Pawang katotohanan lamang. Kaya nga kasi, yun yung lugar ng Diyos. Kaya nga ang Diyos, the way, the truth, and the life. Kaya laging nasa katotohanan. O tayo nasa lugar ba? Paano malalaman pag naayin na sa lugar, totoo ba lagi yung buhay natin? Kung ikaw ay asawa, totoo ka ba talagang asawa? Marami kang asawa. Kung ikaw ay pari, totoo pari ka ba talaga? Baka naman feeling mo, binata ka lang. Kung ikaw ay negosyante, totoo bang nagnedegosyo ka? Baka naman dinadaya mo yung mga customer mo. Kung ikaw ay tatakbo sa eleksyon at nangangarap na magsilbi sa bayan, talaga bang totoo yung sinasabi mo ngayon? O baka naman iisa ka rin sa mga madaming madaming nagsasabi ng magagandang salita bago mag-eleksyon. Pero pag tatapos na eleksyon, pag nando na sa upuan, hindi mo na makikita. Nasa lugar, katotohanan. Ang alawang bagay na nakikita ko kay Juan Bautista, kung bakit nasa lugar lagi. Yung kanya mga ginagawa dahil sa pagmamahal niya sa Diyos. Dahil sa pagmamahal niya sa Diyos. Hindi dahil natatakot siya na magkamali sa mata ng Diyos. Hindi pagmamahal sa Diyos ang umiiran sa kanyang buhay. Kaya yung kanya mga salita, masakit man sa ibang tao galing yun sa pagmamahal niya sa Diyos. Kapag ka nagsasabi siya ng totoo, masakit man sa pandinig o sa puso ng ibang tao, galing yun sa pagmamahal sa Diyos. Palaging patungkol sa pagmamahal sa Diyos. Kaya nga, anong resulta ng pagmamahal na yun sa buhay niya? Kaligayahan. Ang sarap nga naman talaga kapag ka nagmamahal ka, di ba? Masaya. Masaya. Kaya nga ang sabi niya dito, nung nakita niya ang kanyang minamahal sa katauhan ng ating Panginoong Meso Kristo, what were his words? He said, This joy of mine 
has been complete. Wala na siyang hahanapin pang iba. Parang naniligaw, ano? Wala nang hahanapin pang iba. Ikaw lamang. Ikaw lamang. Galing sa nagmamahal na puso. Kaya puno-puno ang kaligayahan ng buhay niya. Tayo ba yung nasa lugar? Totoo bang nagmamahal tayo sa Diyos? Ang bunga ng pagmamahal sa Diyos ay kaligayahan sa kanyang presensya. Ano nararamdaman natin sa presensya ng Diyos? Huh! Obligasyon lang itong nasa presensya o pananampalataya sa Diyos. Hindi yun pagmamahal. Ay naku, kailangan ko magdasal o magsimba kasi baka parusahan ako ng Diyos. Hindi yan pagmamahal. Ang bunga ng pagmamahal sa Diyos, meron lagi kaligayahan. Pupunta ako sa simbahan, makakasama ko ulit ang aking minamahal. At doon ako tunay na maligaya. Tayo ba'y nasa lugar? Si Juan Bautista, laging nasa lugar. Hindi man ito kagustuhan ng ibang tao, hindi man ito popular sa mundo ni Juan Bautista. Pero sa mata ng Diyos, siya ay laging nasa lugar. Nasa lugar na sapagkat nakayakap lagi sa pagmamahal sa Diyos at sa katotohanan ng Diyos. Amon sa atin, lumugar, lumugar, lumugar. Kasi tayo po tayo lahat. Like St. John, let us pray that we may become faithful to our identity and vocation as Christians. In every petition, let our answer be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That our concern and interest as a church may go beyond the boundaries of family, community, and nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may understand our baptism as a call to go out of our way and reach out to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young men and women may listen to the Spirit in their hearts and respond to the Spirit's prompting from deep within. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick, the despised, the lonely, and the poor might know the good news of Christ presence in the way we relate to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may enjoy the fruits of the grace of their baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now in the silence of our hearts, we offer our personal and our particular intentions. And we also pray for the intentions of this Mass. Father, we realize that you have called us to spread the good news of the kingdom. Help us to share in your Son's redeeming work. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through Him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor, when our frailty is assumed by your word. Not only does human mortality receive an ending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, Fidelis, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Dominic and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take Praise away the sins the of the world, Jesus have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Son of Mary. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please kneel for the prayer for the elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From, from coercion, Lord. violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together, hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us together pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others. 
May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to, our loving to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May your people, O Lord, whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the needed solace of things that pass away, they may strive with ever-deepened trust for things eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bago po tayo magtapos ng ating misa, ako po ay magpapasalamat sa ating lector commentator, sa ating acolyte, at sa ating Eucharistic ministers. At sa inyong lahat po na nakisa sa misang ito, maraming maraming salamat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We all go in peace. Thanks be to God. We shall now have the prayer for the blessing of the sick and the blessing of our rosaries and other religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness towards our brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ and Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawa. May these rosaries, images, candles, oils, and other religious articles, our devotees and pilgrims, be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.